Hey everybody, welcome back to another flip lesson. In this video, we're gonna be talking about proteins. And this is part two of the biomolecules video, uh, which you watched part one last week. So in this video, we're gonna get into proteins, uh, what they do and how they're important for maintaining homeostasis. So here's your key terms. Make sure you know those at the end of the video. All right, so what is a protein? I'm sure you've heard lots about them. Um, you, you hear about protein in your diet, if you work out a lot or exercise or a bodybuilder, you talk about proteins. But what do they actually mean, right? It's one of the four biomolecules, macromolecules, big molecules that are essential to living things, right? And we talked about in the first video, the other three are carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. So proteins are these final step and they're really key to life, right? I mean, life wouldn't exist without any four of them, but proteins are really important in doing the daily processes of life. And because they're a macromolecule, they're a big molecule. They're made up of many little parts or monomers like we talked about in the flipped lesson. And the monomers for proteins are amino acids. And they're chemicals that, you know, if we think about our Legos, right, they're one single monomer, one unit that we can kind of stack and bond together because of that carbon atom. We make these big complex structures like proteins that are made out of amino acids. And you can see here, uh, we have a couple steps of how to build proteins. So it starts with that primary structure where amino acids are bonded with peptide bonds to make polypeptide chains. And these get really, really long. We'll talk about where these happen in the cell in a few chapters. Um, and you'll, you'll see it gets really complex. Proteins, they go from this long chain, they start to fold and they fold again, and they start to have a really specific shape, um, which if you take uh, AP biology, you'll talk all about proteins and how they function. But it comes back to one of those big ideas that shape determines function. And these proteins, when they're all finished and packaged up and nice and folded, they have a very particular shape which helps them do their job in the body. So the big thing to remember here for us today though is that the monomers, the building blocks, are amino acids. All right, and there's actually 20 different amino acids that exist out there in the world. Um, and the way we, we bond those 20 amino acids in order helps build those proteins and build the shape so that they can have a specific function. And again, when you get into AP, you'll talk about many different types of amino acids or the 20 different, how they come together and build those proteins. All right, so what are the jobs of proteins? Well, we have four major jobs, right? The first one is to control the rate of reactions in the body. Your cells, your bodies are always doing chemical reactions. That's what we are. Um, big sacks of water that do chemical reactions and create energy or use energy. So your proteins are pivotal in controlling how fast or how slow those reactions happen. They also regulate cellular processes. Um, think about it like an on and off switch for doing different processes that your cells need to do to survive. They also help transport molecules. And this is really big when we talk about like getting stuff in and out of a cell, which we'll talk about. Proteins are clutch in that. And finally, they help to fight disease. Um, especially right now, we think about coronavirus, COVID-19, right? Your proteins are really crucial in your immune system and helping you fight off disease and bad things. And of course, examples, right? So where do we get proteins? Think about those foods that are high in protein. Uh, lots of meats are high in protein, chicken and eggs. When we think about the, the meats of them, all those are really, really high in protein. If you are a bodybuilder, you work out a lot, uh, you know, you have to get, you, you eat a lot of chicken or red meat traditionally is what what they say uh, to get that protein. But think about it, where do these animals get their protein? They don't eat meat and they have to get it. Um, they get it from fruits and vegetables too. So things like nuts, uh, beans, different types of green vegetables have a lot of protein, definitely your beans. And the, that's other ways you can get protein besides meat. And then of course, like processed foods, like protein bars, um, not only have sugars and lipids, but they're high in protein as well. So that's where we get protein in our diet. And in terms of all the macromolecules we've talked about, it's really important to have a well-balanced, spread out diet and move that based on what you're consuming in your body. If you work out a lot, if you're pretty stagnant, what do you need more than others? So that's proteins. And now Ms. Graham's gonna talk to you about uh, how proteins create things called enzymes. Hey team, so Mr. Toda just taught us all about proteins in general. And now we are going to talk about one of those specific functions of proteins. As he said, proteins are key in regulating cell processes. And that's because enzymes are a special type of protein that we find in 
our bodies and the bodies of all living things. So let's take a step back for a moment and talk about chemical reactions. So next year, if you decide to take chemistry, this will be one of the main focuses of the class. But in a chemical reaction, we take one set of chemicals, which we call the reactants, um, and through a series of steps, they can form what are known as the products. So here you can see an example of a reaction taking place. And if we look at it, we still have all the same basic elements so we've got some carbons here, some carbons there, some hydrogens here, some hydrogens there. They basically just switched partners. We formed new products from this reaction. So chemical reactions are really important. Inside of our bodies, there are millions of reactions going on right now while you watch this video. So how can we control reactions inside of our cells? All right. So we also have things called catalysts. Catalysts are substance that speed up reactions. So outside of our body, one type of catalyst would be heat, or you, as you can see here, fire. So for instance, to make steel, which is one of the strongest products known to man, we take iron and some other elements and we heat it up to 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit to get that reaction to take place we want a reaction to take place in our body, I think you can probably get that it wouldn't be a good idea to heat our bodies up to 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit, we would die. So instead of general catalysts like heat, we have these special types of proteins called enzymes. So as you can see here, an enzyme is a type of catalyst. It's a biological catalyst. It helps get reactions done in our bodies. Okay, so an enzyme as you can see here, here's our definition, is a type of molecule, it's a type of protein in our cells that helps reactions to take place. And there's a lot of details involved with enzymes. Um, so we're just gonna take this little example right here, this little picture, and we're gonna concentrate in on it. So this little weird shape thing kind of looks like a Pac-Man to me. I hope you folks know what Pac-Man are, make myself sound old. So this little red thing here is our enzyme. And as you can see, it has this really specific shape right here. This little shape, this little place of the enzyme right here is known as its active site. And that is where a substance comes along. We call that substance the substrate. And I think you can see by looking, that substrate fits perfectly into the enzyme's active site. And they join together for uh, a few brief seconds. And when it's um, joined together, we call it an enzyme substrate complex. And what that enzyme does is it helps a reaction to take place. So if we look at this third and final step, our substrate has changed. In this instance, it's broken down into two what we call products. Important thing to keep in mind here is the enzyme shape never changed. The enzyme is ready to go start all over again and break down some more substrate into those products. So this is happening in our cells all the time to carry out tons and tons of reactions. Um, another uh, video or little diagram here so we can see it again, just another image. So here's our enzyme. As you can see throughout, the enzyme never changes shape. We start in this case with the substrate. There's two of them. They come and they sit right in that enzyme's active site. That substrate fits that active site perfectly. Um, when they're joined together, again, we call that the enzyme substrate complex. And in this case, we've joined two smaller substrates together to form a product. Enzyme is free to now go do this all over again. So there's lots of examples uh, of this in your body. A great example is how we break down um, what's called uh, lactate, uh, lactose, sorry, it is a sugar in milk. And there's a special enzyme called lactase that helps us break down those sugars. Um, and if you are lactose intolerant, it means your body is missing that enzyme called lactase and you can't break down that sugar lactose and it gives you upset stomach and and some other discomforts. Because the substrate and the active site fit together so perfectly, we often use the model of a lock and a key. So as you know, one key fits into one lock perfectly. So we can think about that like an enzyme and a substrate, how they fit together. So one enzyme fits to one substrate. So one last little look at it. We have our enzyme right here that 
funky shape on the enzyme is known as the active site. That's where the substrate is going to come and sit. When they're joined together briefly, it's known as the enzyme substrate complex. And then in this case, our substrate was broken down into two new products. But it's important to notice that the enzyme didn't change. It's free to go do this reaction all over again. We formed our products. They go off and um, do various jobs in our cells. So again, enzymes are a type of protein. They're very important at controlling reactions in our body. Without enzymes, we wouldn't be able to get reactions started. Um, a common way that reactions take place out of our body is by adding heat. Not a good idea to do that in our cells. So luckily we have these pretty cool proteins known as enzymes that help reactions to take place. So I would take a look at uh, your vocab from the beginning. Make sure you know what all those terms are. Do your flipped lesson notes and we will see you later.